Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Plough Lane podcast. As usual, we've got a lot to talk about. We had a one-all draw away at Crew on the weekend. Uh, it's a little bit of an awful performance after the first 15 minutes when you look at it, but other fans might say it's a good draw when you look at where Crew are in the table. But to be honest, it wasn't a great performance after it hit one-all. Uh, we'll talk about the goals that we scored and we conceded. We'll talk about each individual performance in the lineup. Um, and then we had key players. Omar Bugle was missing. Armani Little was missing. Um, and they've also both been given, well, they've both been given contracts and they have to accept it all or not. But we'll, we'll see about that. And then we'll get on to um, the Harrogate game and Stockport over the Easter. Um, we won't have a podcast next week as it's Easter Sunday. And I believe most people are quite busy. So there'll be a, there'll be one a week after that. But we are joined by Hector in the top right and a special guest, Jack, a.k.a. Don's vlogs. Um, we'll start with Jack. How are you, and how are you feeling after that? Uh, thank you, mate. Away at crew. Yeah, it's not the worst result in the world, is it? I mean, no. problem is we don't want to be dropping three points in these games, and that's the main thing. It's keeping ourselves up and um, up and around there, really. Yeah, that is very true. Hector, is that pretty much the same for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a bad point considering where they are on the table. We just the uh, coming into these last games, we just need to be picking up three points a lot more rather than um, <clears throat> taking these draws. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I mean, it's a good point. Disappointing when you look at the way we played. I mean, let's talk about the overall performance. We went. I think it was ninety seconds. I think it was. We went one. We went one though up by John Kamani Gordon. Scored his first goal from within. It was to be fair. The cross by Curry was good. But then after that, we just lacked and. I feel like the first 15 minutes, Jack Curry, Josh Neuville were bombing on in the first 10, 15 minutes, and then they just didn't do it for the rest of the game. Um, we tried to get a couple of goals in the second half towards the end, but it just fell apart. Um, Jack, what was your overall thoughts on the game um, and our performance? Generally, before the game, obviously, I would have took a point. You know, I, we always want to go to our away days and win. That's the main, you know, first and foremost. But I mean, I would have took a point before the game. I think the way we started was so good. Like we, we were pressing the ball high. We, we weren't allowing them out of their box. And obviously, the first goal was a really, really good passing move. Mm. So, like, we kept the ball on the floor. I think Kelly picked up the ball first, laid it out to Curry. Curry just drove down, put the ball in, uh, across the box. You know, Kamani Gordon just sweeps in, scores a goal. Really, really good. I mean, crew looked like they, they were offering absolutely nothing for the first 15 minutes. And we were in the stands thinking we were going to be treated to like a last three or four nil, if that yeah. makes sense. And then literally after the quick free kick, everything just went out the window, didn't it? There, we looked like there was no game plan. All of a sudden, like 15 minutes in, Kamani Gordon and Josh Kelly switched. So Kelly went central. And then Bass just decided to go long ball again. Yeah, And it was just from... I don't know how we started so well to literally go into like a team that had no game plan whatsoever, but mm. there wasn't much quality in the game whatsoever. You know, I think going into the game, a point would have been good, but when you actually see the quality that was on show on the day and what crew were offering, yeah. you know, you we were walking away a little bit disappointed that we sh haven't really taken all three there. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, Hector, is that pretty much the same for you? I just wanted to point out like, um, as what Jack said, is like the quality of crew. I thought they were awful for a team which is in the playoffs. Um, I think we could have been two or three now up. They had some pretty important blocks after we scored the first goal. Um, and I was watching the game on iFollow and the crew commentators were pretty worried. They thought Wimbledon would go two nil, three nil up as well. Um, what's your overall thoughts? And is it like disappointing looking at the games which we should be picking up more points? You can think about the Sutton game the Crawley game, those are, it always happens with Wimbledon. There's always games in the season which will cost us. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think it was that the first 15 minutes were pretty good. We looked like we were going to, you know, go into that very com com confidently and uh, mm -hmm. come out with a result. But as soon as we switched off once and they punished us for that, it just all went out of the window. It went back to hoofing it up up the pitch there was even from um crew they were doing the same they were hoofing it up and losing it it was just like back and forth it, there wasn't 
was no quality whatsoever. It was such a boring game to watch because it was just hoof it and lose it and then hoof it and then lose it. I mean, I don't know how we went from such a good start to that. And these games that we drop, we drop these points and where we look strong and then and then we and then we throw it out the window. I think the, these games, like one, two or three games a season, they they do come to con- cost us, especially coming towards the end where we have to get these results. Like yeah. you see, if we imagine we won, if we beat Crawley, if we beat Sutton, um, they both look poor at them. The, the, the times that we played them, and we we took nothing off them. If we beat them, we would be in a completely different position in the table. So yeah. it's just these like one or two games. That are going to come to cost us at the end of the season and we will we will see that exactly i agree just before we talk about more about crew i wanted to talk about jack your channel don's vlogs on youtube i think just everyone every content creator for wimbledon is just brilliant it shows different angles of the goals um like you have we have a couple of vloggers in the south stand which um shows shows the atmosphere but so do you as well the limbs <laughs> you show the limbs behind the goal it's so good um First question for you, really. Um, talk to us about your channel and why did you start it? I'd like to say it's my channel, but the boy, he takes all the credit. So <laughs> he's the one who wanted to do it in the first place. And it was very difficult because of my, my daughter, she actually originally started it. Yeah. And being sort of a female, you know, into the football, and that, it was really good for the club. But obviously she decided not to do it anymore, which is her own personal choice. And I think it was more like a sibling rivalry. You know, Ronnie then wanted to take up the mantle and then she wouldn't let him continue her channel. He had to start all over again. And it started off as a bit of fun and then everyone really started enjoying it. You know, the subscribers started going up. And like, yeah, it's just a a good bit of fun, really. I think it was difficult because during the period I was bringing Ronnie to AFC Wimbledon, we I think we were on the 28-game winless streak. Yeah. So it was yeah. really, really hard trying to get him to actually like <laughs> fall in love with Wimbledon. <laughs> so like, obviously, when we won a few games, and then the players started engaging with him a bit more. You know, he really fell in love with it all, the club, everything. And yeah, yeah. now he just wants to go home and away. So the channel's good. Yeah. I like the channel. Love the club. You know, but as long as he's happy, you know, my priorities in football at the moment has sort of changed. It's more about going to the football and enjoying it with the kids. And yeah. if that's that's what they enjoy doing. You know, I'm happy to carry on doing it with them. And yeah, as long as everyone enjoys it, we're carry on doing it. Love to see it. Just it just came to the top of my mind. I did didn't Ronnie did, did he walk out with the players once? It was when you hit yeah like, yeah. Milestone. yeah. How how, how was yeah. that for him? Yeah, he uh, like he he actually didn't know anything about it. So I went to the sponsors mill, and he wasn't allowed to go to that one because it was a school night. And, uh, you know, I bumped into Rob Tuvey and they just had like a suggestion kind of thing, an idea. It wasn't materialised or concrete or anything like that. And then I messaged him and he was just like, yeah, OK, it's, it's, it's a nice idea. But Ronnie knew nothing about it. So when I took him to the Tranmere game, he just sort of came over with Sam Pearson, which was his favourite player at the time. And I said, I had his boots in my bag and I just said, like, go on, son, you're going on the pitch. And he was just, he, he was just over the moon. He literally didn't know what to do, if that makes sense. And oh, I think uh, he deserved it. Yeah, he, you exactly. know, he, his football knowledge sort of when he started doing it isn't there, but I think as everyone can see, you know, he's doing really, really well and he's talking more and more each week. And yeah, hopefully, yeah, like, like we've got all the kids doing the half time stuff now, which is more what I want to do. I want to step back and just let the kids enjoy the channel and, and, more about the kids, if that makes sense. I yeah, think we've got the good. other channels that are a bit, a bit more like rated 15 plus. <laughs> and I'd like to where, where, where we sit in a stand, we can offer a PG version of the vlogs. <laughs> and you also do like the Hayden cam and everything like that. I think that's absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Oh, yeah, we just yeah. try and throw little things in here and there to change it up, mix it up a bit and make it more, you know, I've kid friendly or other stuff you know you know i see hayden do a few more bits and bobs but we always love getting the bin slide in there exactly that's true what's the um what's the next step for don's vlogs what's the ambitions like you hit 1000 subscribers that's really really good to see fully deserved what's the next steps is it just carrying on doing the same thing or is it a little bit i more? think so 
I, I think so because we just do it for fun and it's not really yeah. like any personal milestones or anything like that. Um, it's all about Wimbledon, really. We just love Wimbledon. We don't want to go other games or we don't want to go to, you know, so as long as everyone's enjoying it and we'll make small minor tweaks here and there. We would like to get more of the fans involved. So like birthdays and things like that, we can throw birthday messages on the Hayden cam and stuff. I think that will be our sort of next milestone, but obviously it takes everyone to get involved. <laughs> yeah. I'm wanting to do something and something actually materialising. It's completely different, mm. but yeah, we. I think we've yeah we've got a little surprise for the end of the season video as well. Oh really? So That's gonna be good. Like, yeah, we've got a little surprise. Won't oh. give no spoilers just yet, but <laughs> no, that that would be good to see what what the video is at the end of the season. Last question for you about the channel: um, What yeah. is the three most favourite vlogs that you've done, and why? If you can pick you know, this was a really really hard one it was really hard but i'm just going to go based off this season because i think okay. yeah that makes sense i think we had some we had some absolute howlers i mean like i think the worst one we ever did i'll start with the worst we ever done was salford last year i think that was oh, at home oh god yeah. don't, don't remind me don't remind that was, me that was absolutely gut-wrenching you know i think i think that was my you know when my kids first major heartbreak walking out the stadium and they were speechless <laughs> yeah. and i said to them that's football you know that that's just the way it is it's football but yeah that was gutting so that was i think that was my worst vlog <laughs> but I, I, it hit a lot of views actually yeah. you know it's, it's quite funny because the vlogs that we lose Get generally do really well yeah <laughs> that's that's that's, that's you know, so like a 22, but i always want us to win you know because it's all about wimbledon yeah. um yeah, so I'm going to start with the third. My third one, I think, will be Notts County this season away. Okay. Well, it could be Notts County home or away, really. I mean, they were both very good, enjoyable games. And I think that was basically because the crowd was so good. You know, it wasn't the greatest performance in the world, but just enjoying it with everyone there, the yeah. thousand fans, odd fans that went. So I good. I thought it was amazing. For, 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 for an away yeah. game up north really good i think my second is mansfield at home nice last minute winner I've, last i think minute i know what's going to be first but <laughs> yeah <I'll, laughs> the suspense and i think ronan's ronan curtis with his 94th minute winner yeah against of course the franchise keep it pg the franchise yeah is that is that your vlog with the most views i think it i think it was if I remember correctly, I might, yeah, I might... Yeah, it is. It is yeah. yeah, it overtook, I think, the Chesterfield one when we lost in the FA Cup 2 0. That was our highest view video until, obviously, the brilliant win. <laughs> well, there you the go. That's... Exactly. That's really good to see. Um, if anyone doesn't know who Don's Vlogs is, if you, if you don't know who he is, then I think that's pretty. Uh, embarrassing if you don't if you haven't subscribed to him go subscribe to him on youtube watch the vlogs it's absolutely brilliant seeing it from pretty much the halfway line good views for all the goals for the atmosphere as well which is brilliant to see um let's move back on to the crew game i just wanted to talk more um both of, i was wanted to talk more about the two goals that were scored and um, we'll start with our goal john kamani gordon scored 90 seconds into the game it was a pretty good work goal um I just wish we did more of that, bringing Curry and Nouvel more up the pitch. Um, I don't know. I feel like they just sat back for the majority of the rest of the game. Hector, is that like I don't know? It was it was a good, it was a well worked goal, and we had um, and we've changed formation to bring these wing backs in and to bomb forward, and they did it for the first. Well, whenever it hit one or before that, they did it, but after that, they just it just completely switched off. Talk to us on your on on the goal and everything like that. Yeah, I thought it was a pr pretty um, good, well, well worked goal. Brilliant finish from um, Gordon as well. I thought that the cross from Curry was quality as well. And I think about, about the wing backs. I think the first fifteen minutes they they looked full of energy. They looked they were springing forward whenever they could. They were you know running at players whenever they could, and then they just disappeared. Hmm. That is it's weird. They just disappeared after they we conceded, and so did the rest of the team. I mean, it was the, the goal is brilliant goal, well worked, 
fully deserved, I would say, as well. Yeah. Just don't know what happened after that. Exactly. Jack, I think we've conceded some pretty sloppy goals this season. It's, it's typical Wimbledon starting well. Well, actually, not really this season, because I think there's a stat. We talked about it last week on the podcast, me and Hector. I think it's when we've gone 1-0 up, it's like we've had 14 wins, one draw and one loss. So it's, it was pretty weird going 1-0 up and then conceding. Um, talk to us about their goal. You were there. Um, it might be a different kind of perspective. What went wrong? Well, obviously, yeah, I listened to the obviously the pod last week and when you said that stat. So when we went 1-0 up on Saturday, hmm. I did say, like, oh, at least we're not going to lose, you know, because <laughs> the stats don't, stats don't lie, do they? No. So, yeah, the goal was, uh, we just fell asleep. I think everyone was asleep, you know. A lot of people said Bass could have done better. But yeah. I think everyone, generally everyone could have done better, you know, because, you know, we weren't marking and we weren't dropping in and, they took the quick free kick. It's a great strike, really, isn't it? But I mean, if Bass is not, if Bass is not set, he's not going to react as quickly as he should. That's you know, and the walls are deep. So if everyone's asleep, you know, you always that one second behind. So I do think Bass probably could have saved it, and he would have saved it if he was concentrating like all the other players. But obviously, he wasn't. Hmm. But yeah, like Hector was saying, just, I think the frustrating thing was like we just dropped off after that goal. And I think every player on that pitch went to probably 40% of their ability. And it was just like, if crew was that good and they upped their game and then we were that poor, yeah, I could understand it. But it was just the fact that they were so poor as well. And we were still so poor. So there was no actually like catalyst or like any reason for why we actually dropped off the intensity or stopped the press or, mm. you know, it wasn't like they were that good that they forced us to, change something it was just concerning really more than anything do you think those type of goals will just cost us towards the end of the season I like, you know, the end of the season is all about expectation isn't it and yeah. in the beginning we all took a mid-table finish obviously I'm fully aware you know with expectation can change and as we, we've got a squad that probably could be in the playoffs and so as a lot of other teams would think the same thing because when they come up against the playoff teams and they start beating them, they go, actually, they're not that good. They're not that good. No, but I just sure. think, you know, you have to has set a bar of realism as well. And we, we all would have took sort of 10th at the beginning of the season, a lot more wins and a lot more. And I just think it's building blocks, isn't it? It's, it's a lot better than last season, number one. And number two, like, as Hector was saying, the game's what was going to cost us like the Suttons, the Crawleys. We need to build on that now. And we go one step further next year mm -hmm. if we don't make the playoffs this year. And then we're looking at an even higher points tally that could be automatic points. True. You know, we can cut a, like, a few of them and we're making building blocks each year. Then obviously, like, next year could be a really successful season if we uh, manage to maintain the squad and improve it. I really hope when, when we bring, like, the retain list out that they've that we've given everyone contracts. So we'll, we'll talk about it more in a in a little bit with Omar Bugle and Little. Um, they've been offered new contracts. I really flipping hope so that they are accepted because they're so important. Uh, let's talk about um, each individual performance and look at the lineup. So the lineup was batting goal and then uh, kind of three five two or three five one. I don't, I don't even know what it was. It was Bass, Barmer, O'Toole, Brown, Newville, Reeves, Little, Curry, Gordon, Curtis and Kelly. Um, we'll start with Hector. Let's talk about the back line. We had Bass in goal, Barmer, O'Toole and Brown as the three centre-backs. How do you think those guys played? And especially because we got Johnson, we had Johnson on the bench. I would have liked to maybe see him come on. I don't know if he's that fit or he just had to go on the bench um, because Bugle and Little wasn't there. Um, what do you think about our back line yesterday? Yeah, again, it, it wasn't really the, their best game. I think they had a moment. I think Brown had a moment where he um, came with ball and they both went for the ball at the same time. Absolutely no communication between them. And um, they took a counter on that. But I, I, I don't think it was their strongest performance as a as a back three. And it's quite worrying because, um, well, not, not, not too concerning, but considering uh, the performance against Newport as well how um you know 2 0 conceding to again I was pretty I don't know. Yeah. especially the second one. So, they just switched off like 
it, it was at the last minute, Gordon, I saw him notice that there's just two players sitting there waiting for the ball. There's yeah. no movement. It was it was poor. A lot, a lot better could have been done. And I know they can do better because they have done better in previous games. But, you know, I think... Do you bring Johnson back in, maybe, for Harrogate? I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm not Johnny Jackson. Yeah. I don't know if he's no, fit. But... It's a difficult one. I mean, maybe because of these past two games, make a small change to it. Hmm. Not, 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 nothing like massive that completely change it up. I just think something small because it in the last two games it hasn't really worked. That is true, Jack. Is that pretty much the same of you about the defense? How how do you think they played yesterday, and especially in the last couple games when the defense has changed because of the injuries that we've had? Also, I just realised. Sorry, um, I said little was in the lineup. It was ball. I don't know why I wrote that down, but um, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I think. <laughs> The defence have been pretty good overall, you know, over the period of time. And Brown isn't a centre-half. No. You know, O'Toole isn't naturally a centre-half. And he came into the squad with probably half a game under his belt at Mansfield in a, in a like half a season. Barmer is obviously playing in a three with two other men, players, you know, who who are not usually in that back three. They've been thrown together. So generally, they've done really well. But I think yesterday was more a case of, did we need three centre-halves? True. Uh, like not, yeah, yesterday. we Did Did we need three centre-halves? Because they were offering nothing. You know, there was an opportunity to sort of maybe take one of them off and bring a Tilly in. So cause I always find when we play Ball and Reeves, they love taking the ball with the centre-halves. Yeah. You almost end up with a back like five centre halves at times, which leaves no one in the midfield, which causes us obviously to go long all the time because mm. we're not playing through the lines. We haven't got that ball carrier. We haven't got that sort of you know individual to to connect the midfield to the attack, uh, the defence to the attack. You know because obviously like Reeves drops in so deep, but I think when Lewis comes in or Johnson, they do like carrying the ball and they have the pace to do it. So when they progress past Reeves with the ball, at least Reeves drops in. And then that sort of creates it. But I do find like we we lack a lot of mobility in the centre half. I'm not, I think they defended really well, to be fair. Hmm. But obviously, progressing the ball quickly and other stuff, it, it does depend on the calibre. So when they are fit, I think they do need to come straight in. I really just to give so. us a different dimension to the game. Yeah. I always ask everyone this. Um, it's a pretty tough question, but what would be your ideal kind of defence and what formation maybe would you do? So let's so let's say everyone's fit in the defence. What would you what would you change? I think I do like the back five. I do like the back five or the back three with the the two fullbacks. But I'm just. For the first 15 minutes yesterday, we used fullbacks like we should use fullbacks. You know, jo um, Newfield was picking the ball up. He was absolutely skinning the the, 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 their fullback. And then obviously, like, if we're just going to go hoof ball, there's literally no point of paying five at the back. You know, so it's just like, if we're going to utilise the fullbacks correctly and we're going to play it a certain style, then obviously... I think the five works, but if we're just going to hoop ball, we've literally just got to pack the team out with the biggest players we can mm. and maybe just play three tenner forwards and just, you know, old school sort of hoof it ball. At least yeah. we can w work the percentages. Exactly. But yeah, if we're going we're gonna to say, say we got into the playoffs and I had to choose a back line, it would obviously be Curry, left wing back. You'd have Johnson, Lewis, Farmer, and. Mm. The right back is the right wing back is very hard because I thought Ogundia came on and done quite well I, yesterday. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I do really like Josh Newfield playing there. Mm. But you know, I I do think a big problem playing wing backs is between Curry, Ogundia, Bila. I think they've probably got about five six assists between them in all the appearances put together. Yeah. So I feel like your wing backs need to be creative, and if we're not creating chances from the wing back positions with decent crossing, 
if that makes sense. We, we, we're not, there's no point having them there. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. Um, Hector, let's continue talking about wing backs. Um, it was Newville on the right, Curry on the left. Uh, we've we changed formation for the MK game, stuck with it since. Um, Newville had a decent start to the game, as as Jack said, skinning that skinning that left back. He was having a horrid time. Um, and I think we should have capitalised more. But yeah, as Jack said, with five or six assists with all of them combined, that is a little bit worrying. But um, how do you think those two have played yesterday and kind of overall since we've changed formation? Yeah, when when we changed formation, I thought I thought it was um I thought it was a bit of a risk, especially because of the the circumstance <coughs> of the game that we did it in. And ever since ever, ever since we did that, it's, it's worked quite well. You know, we beat um beat Chilling and play playoff um playoff rivals you can say um but they they, they they um yesterday they they look really bright and just full of energy in the first 15 minutes and a little bit after we scored um but then they just disappeared after i think they just weren't working as much as they could have and i think if if they do work as hard as they can because you know they've they've shown they can be brilliant they show they can make a complete difference to the game yeah. um because we've got results with them playing like that before when they're putting their all in. But I just feel like yesterday they they weren't putting as much as they could in. They weren't putting as much on the plate as they as they had. That you know, like as Jack said before, around forty percent of what they could have delivered. And I feel like if they fully delivered, I think we could have been a lot more clinical on the attack and created a, a lot more, especially rather than just hoofing it up. I think we could have created a bit more from 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 the back. But I think if we if if they do deliver um, on Good Friday against Harrogate, I think just keep it like that until the end of the season, because I don't think there's much of an issue with it. I just think they need to put that effort in, and because you know when they put effort in, it works, but when they don't, it doesn't. So they have to put the effort in, or it just won't work. That's very true, Jack. We had Reeves and Ball in the middle. Um, Little was out. I think it was an injury. Um, he got injured in training. Um, how do you think those two played? And did I feel like we really missed our mind a little? Even though he had a little bit of an off game against Newport, um, I still feel like we missed that little bit more of energy in driving forward in midfield. What do you think? Obviously, one one. So we didn't. They played all right, didn't they? But I mean, like there was no quality anywhere on the pitch. I mean, Reeves is always consistently good. If that makes, yeah, so Reeves always. I thought Ball done a, like okay. It's very hard just dipping in and out of a team, mm. and especially when you lose, you know, someone like Omar Bugle. He does bring an intensity to the game, so it's a bit like when you have someone like that, it brings the midfield in and connects. But I think they've done okay. It wasn't. I don't think no one particularly had a terrible game, but no one particularly yeah. had a great game. If that makes sense. I think the two best players on the pitch are obviously Jack Curry, who's always good, and yeah. Otto, I thought, done, done really well again. But yeah, between the ball done all right, but it's, like I said, it's very hard just getting dropped into a team and picking up the pieces. With Otto, you know, he, he literally played like, I think before, we, before Otto joined us, he played five minutes of League Two football this season, which I think is brilliant. He, he's, done, he's done really well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Would you keep him next year? Would you offer him a six month contract? Oof. Um I mean he's he's played well. How how old is Otto? I'm actually not sure. I mean wait, let me look up. To be honest, I'd probably sign him, even though I don't think he'll start next year. But as maybe an option if we ever need him, because he's done quite well since he's come in, and especially because as I said, he's played five or six minutes of League Two football coming off the bench for Mansfield. And then he's joined Wimbledon in the same league. And now he's starting and playing full 90 every single game, which I think is quite impressive. So m maybe, yeah, I'd sign him. Um, I don't think he's going to be in Mansfield's plans, especially if they get promoted, which is seem very likely. And um, they're doing really well, even though they had a one or draw to Colchester, but they still play well. I think they will go up automatically. So, yeah, I think I'd sign him. Would you sign him, Jack? Yeah, I can't see. I'd, I'd like to be savvy, so I'd like to say, look, six months, you know, six months. If you do really well, we'll give you the other six months. Yeah. You know, there's an opportunity where you want to go out and play football. 
you know, you're free to go in six months to find another club. Because he's, like you said, he's of an age where, like, we may use him, we may not. And if he wants to go and play football, he might want to take a step down or go and help another team lower down just to get the minutes. So I think a six-month, but I mean, obviously, would a player want to take a six-month deal? That's the question. Changing your whole lifestyle as well to come down south. I mean, yeah. I think he originally, I think he originally, his family come from Harrow. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So I think like, he's literally coming back down to be around family anyway. So he'd be coming closer to his roots by being down here. Okay. I'd actually, no, uh, yeah. I think I'd happily take him. I mean, e even if it's as an option, I think I'd take him. I think he'd get minutes. If if we had and we've had so many injuries in the past couple of years at the back, so if he came in and did the job, then that's absolutely perfect. Um, last bit about the Crawley game: we had three attackers, Gordon, Curtis, and Kelly. Um, Hector, I thought they played all right. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I think everyone played all right for the first fifteen minutes. Um, playing hoofball to Kelly, I think Curtis. I don't know. Curtis is like we huge. say it every week about Curtis is like we we know what he has we we know his ability is it fitness I, I don't know um, I feel like that was his, it was his worst performance I felt like he was just really slow and it was just felt like he was doing nothing he wasn't creating anything when he got on the ball he just he would just look slow not like he was he didn't look like at any point it was going to properly burst forward and do something with it and I think. He should have been taken off earlier because he he didn't really look it for the whole game, um. And then again with the hoof ball up to Kelly, it's never worked. It, it hasn't worked before, so why do it again? You know, it, it's, it, we've, we've we've proved that if we play it simple on the floor, we can get it up the pitch quite easily playing it simply on the floor. Because Kelly, he's five for eight. He's not gonna win a header against me, huh? He's as tall as me. Oh, you midget. Um, yeah, he's tiny. He's, he's not going to be winning headers against massive centre-backs. It's, it, it's We're going to be at least second to the ball, maybe not even second to that ball that gets hoofed up. We always end up losing it when we hoof it. And I feel like there's nothing he can do about that. He can't, you know, add on four inches to his height all of a sudden. Yeah, We just have to play it. If we want to create more up front, it has to start from the back and that can't be hoofing up. It has to be along the floor, you know, give it to Reeves or when Armani's back, give it to Armani. He'll drive forward and play it on the floor. I hate it. It's so frustrating when it's in the air because you know we're never going to win it. You know it's going to go straight back up to the other side of the pitch and it's going to be hoofed again. And it's, it's it's worked before on the floor, so go back to it on the floor. I hate hoofing. I hate hoofing. Like, we can do it. Like, we've shown we can easily play it on the floor. We've done it in the past. Um, we just need to utilise it more. Like, I don't know what goes on. Um, last question about the game to Jack. Don's vlogs. Gordon, Curtis and Kelly, both new signings in January. I mean, they've been OK. I mean, Curtis has gave us some incredible moments. Uh, Gordon scored his first goal and Kelly. I, I don't know how many games it is now, but um, he hasn't scored yet. How have you made those three since they've joined us and especially yesterday? about their performance? I started with Gordon. Obviously, I think his performance is sort of dipped in and out. He does look really creative in some games and he does like... He causes a lot of problems. He's very direct. So, I think getting his first goal yesterday was re really good for him. And it was interesting to see like we had someone like Curtis starting through the middle in the beginning and we decided to switch Kelly to the... I think either left or right. I'm not too sure. One of the two. But it was like when we sort of paying a fee for a striker and we're opting to sort of play him on the wing, which we did with Ali when he first started. You know, he, we're sort of taking away all all the kids' assets. Yeah. So I, I, I do root. I think we're all rooting for Kelly to score a goal. You know, we, I think every vlog you say it, every vlog we say it, this is the week <laughs> Kelly's going to score. You know? If we got a penalty, do you think we'd let him take it? Um, no, Reeves. Reeves would take all of them. I don't know, because Ali was yeah. pretty uh, awful at penalties, wasn't he? <laughs> By choice, oh, no. though. By choice. Like, if it's confidence and getting Kelly his first goal, do you think Reeves... I think it may depend on where we are in a game. If we're 2-0 up or 3-0 up, I think Kelly may take it. But if not, I think Reeves would be on him. But yeah, I, you know, 
I, I just feel really sorry for Kelly. Like you said, uh, Hector, the long the hoof ball is never going to do anything for him. And I don't think we have the creative player in midfield that is going to find that threaded ball through to him. So I feel he's in sort of limbo at the moment, let's say. Mm-hmm. Curtis, you know, he, he has given us some great moments, hasn't he, from the bench so far. And I don't want to say he's a bench player, but I feel like if we can manage to keep hold of Curtis and bring in two or three players of the quality of Curtis, we could really see something good next season. Do you think he'll I stay? I feel like he's staying there too. From, from what I've heard, he's fallen in love with the club massively and he doesn't really want to go. Wow. But then again, nice. it, That's massive. it all depends if someone is going to come in and give him a bumper package. You know, personally, if, if you're looking at his nine minutes performances, you probably wouldn't. But if you're looking at it for 20, 30 minutes of a game, you probably say, yeah, you know. But yeah, yeah, from what I've heard, he's really enjoying it. I mean, he needs minutes, doesn't he? So is he going to go to a club higher up and just sit on the bench? From, but from what I've heard, like, he really loves it here. So yeah, yeah. I, with Curtis, I, I just find when I watch him play, he cuts a frustrated figure on the pitch because you can see him leap and win the header and maybe... We're a bit too static to sort of run onto the ball. I think there was one in the second half yesterday where he sort of done a reverse pass. But Sassy was standing on his toes and he didn't actually even make the run. And I feel like he has the ideas, but he just needs the squad around him to really see the best of him. Yeah. And I, I really died we never actually got to see Curtis and Ali play together. I think that would have been... Mm, that would have been brilliant. So good at flower lane. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's such a shame. Like every single year we have these good players who we start the season with and then it just crumbles away. I mean, there's we need the money because of the debt of the stadium and just to improve the club as a whole. Uh, yeah, it's such a shame. Like imagine if you had a Radoni, a Sal, Ali, Curtis all together. I know it wouldn't happen, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just imagining it all. That would be absolutely brilliant. Um Talking about players maybe signing or new contracts, apparently, um, well, Johnny Jackson had an interview with the South London Press, I believe it was. Omar Bugle and Armani Little have both been given contracts um, which are waiting, hopefully, to be accepted um, come the end of the season or soon, hopefully. Um, Two massive assets to the squad. Hector, we'll start with you. Um, I think it's a pretty obvious question, but we still got to talk about it. Will they have, will they get the contract? Do they deserve it? Um, talk us through your thoughts on those two. I I don't know if Omar will because he's played really well this season, and you know I think he's about thirty years old, isn't he? And I think not sure. I'll have a look for you. I think uh, he's about that. I think, um, and because he's played quite well this season, I think he'll sort of because he's sort of played at Sutton on loan, and I don't think he played that much. That um, he is thirty. That, you're right, by the way. Yeah, it wasn't that much of a standout for Sutton. I think because he played so well this season, I think he'll take this as an opportunity to maybe move up a league. Because when you're 30, this is probably like the final time for him where he's going to properly see where he can step up in his career. Mm. And I don't know if he will want to stay in league if another season in League Two. I feel like that could maybe be the same with Armani, though. Yeah. How old's Armani? How old is he? Sorry? How old's Armani? Um, Armani Little is when I just scroll down, uh, he is 26. Yeah, again, same for him. He could make a move, take this opportunity to move to League One after being quite good in League Two, maybe to a you know, maybe a, a Cambridge or something if they stay up. But again, I think it, I, I, personally, I'd love both of them today. I think having them next season would be fantastic because they've been fa- brilliant the whole of this season. And, you know, when we don't have Booger, he was, he was clearly missed yesterday. Like, we created nothing. I think with Booger, we would have created more. Um, I think that the partnership of Reeves and Armani, I think we should keep that for next season as well. So those two, I think they should be kept, but it will be up to them on their decision-making, on their career, if they will sign a new contract. 
Yeah, I hope so. Jack, is that pretty much the same of you? Do you think they deserve it? Do you think they will sign a contract? Or as Hector said, they might go elsewhere into a higher division. What are your thoughts? I think both definitely deserve, you know, a contract extension. I think they both earned it. When I spoke to Omar, he actually commutes every day from, I think, Swindon. And he comes wow. with Jake Reeves. So he did actually say he, he wouldn't want to go high, like to a higher club just to sit on the bench. Because mm. he's, you know, as we said, he's 30 years old. So by sitting on the bench, your body could deteriorate a couple of years by not actually playing. So he could actually shorten his career by moving up because he's not physically keeping his body in shape by doing the Met Fitness every week. So, yeah, he, he did say that. I think Omar would give us one more year. Personally, I think he would give us one more year. I think because he, he did actually say the commute is hard and it takes a toll on his family and, you know, it would do with family life. But I think while Jake Reeves is here and they can come, to, come in together, I think, yeah, he'll give us another year because he does love Wimbledon. And you have to remember, this is like the pinnacle of his career so far, Wimbledon. Mm. We could say Sutton, but I mean, I think we are bigger than Sutton, aren't we, really? I mean, they might be in the league next season, so I'll go as far, we're bigger than Sutton. We're massive. And yeah, <laughs> Little, I think I think Little, obviously, he's best friends with Connor Lemon Hay Evans. So I you think know what? a lot uh, of think... what happens with Evans will determine what will happen mm. with Little. So I don't you think we'll get an immediate... I hope we sign Evans because mm. he's on a free from Stockport. But I think, obviously, we won't know what Evans will be doing because if Stockport offers Evans a bumper deal to stay, true, we could be up, we could see Armani Little maybe you know holding off on that contract. I think Omar may be the first one to sign rather than Little, mm. but I don't know. That's only speculating. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I wanted to kind of touch on where Wimbledon, where, where we think Wimbledon will end at the end of the season, and kind of, I, well, I think I'll start. I feel like we'll, I f we we won't get playoffs. I don't think we have enough for it. I feel like if if we had if we kept the squad that we had in December and there was no injuries, we'd be playoffs. Yep, hopefully getting promoted with Ali and everything. Um, I feel like we're on a sort of a project going into next season if we can keep the core of the squad. And I think that would be so important, um, especially like Jack Curry. I think he might go in the summer. I hate to say it because he's my favourite player. But um, yeah, if we keep the core of the squad, I think we can easily get automatics next year and then sign some big names. Um, that will be really good to see. Let's start with Hector. Do you think we have enough for playoffs? And where do you think we can end up at the end of the season? After Sorry. yesterday, I, I don't actually see us getting playoffs and if we don't I'm not all too bothered no because at the start of the season after you know what was a shocking season last season um I wasn't expecting us to do as well as we did and you know obviously as Jack said before expectations do change and and they have but it's it's not all too disappointing to miss out on playoffs this season especially as if we did let's say Theoretically, we got playoffs and we went up. I really think we would go straight back down. I don't think we would have a chance in League One. Mm -hmm. But I think if we, you know, let's let it built on this season for next season, we built we built built our team more up in the summer, and we went for automatics this time. Um, I I really reckon that if we went up through automatics, we could you know mid table and um. In, in League One, I think I think that probably would be what I prefer rather than to go through playoffs this year than just to go straight back down. And especially with the teams that we're playing, for the rest of the season, I really don't see us picking up many other wins. I just see us dropping more stupid points like we have before. But yeah, I'm, I'm not all too fast. It's, it, it's, we've had a good season, you know, compared to... I'm finally this, seeing a Wimbledon side which can win a couple of games and not yeah, just exactly. lose every exactly. single week. So it's not nothing to complain about, really. I don't think we can complain. From the last two seasons we've had, we can't really complain about it, can we? No. Jack, is that pretty much the same for you?
the jack jack sorry mate yeah the internet was going in and out i couldn't hear what oh, you right. say um so follow him from what hector said is that pretty much the same view of where we'll end up to the season and it's like building blocks for next season yeah i just you know what i really hope is because it's so tight between like i think 15th and fifth isn't it six or something like that that you know after we have had a fairly reasonable season we just don't drop off now and end up like 14th in the table because i think that'll be really non-reflective of the season we've had and uh, it may almost be disappointing. But I mean, yeah, I think, like Hector said, I think any team going up through the playoffs is probably going to come straight back down. I just don't think there's the quality to survive in League One unless someone's going to get some serious investment. And if we don't go up, I really hope MK go up and then we can go up next season and they can come down. So... <laughs> That's fingers true. crossed <laughs> that's very true no, we, can avoid um, we can avoid them for a season yeah exactly Auto. that's true i hate playing them i mean it's good when we win it was a brilliant day one of the yeah. best days i've seen as a wimbledon fan but mm. yeah especially especially away from home that was a uh, not a yeah. good choice <laughs> oh christ that was awful the amount, of abuse, the amount of the amount of abuse i got on twitter that night was crazy <laughs> And at school yeah, uh, the next yeah, morning. We never, we never knew games that we did. We left that game at 66 minutes. I think I, after I, PK I, got sent off. I do not blame you. We, I do not blame you. Yeah. we stayed the whole whole way through, didn't I we? I was hoping something was going to happen, but I don't know why I stayed, to be honest. It was embarrassing. But um, anyways, let's move on to the kind of final 10-ish minutes of the podcast, talking about the next couple of games. Um, we, have a, we have two games in kind of the next week or eight days. We have Harrogate on Good Friday and then Stockport. So that's at home at Plough Lane on Friday and then Stockport away on Easter Monday, which is going to be very tough as they just beat um, the franchise 5-0 last night, which was quite a uh, funny and enjoyable watch, to be honest. It was great seeing them getting battered. Um, Harrogate sit 14th, four points off us. Their last five games haven't been the best since yesterday, to be honest. They drew one all with Harrogate. Uh, lost 2-1 to Crawley. Then they had two nil-nil draws away at Wrexham and Barrow, which, to be honest, isn't really bad results. But then they beat Bradford 3-0 yesterday, which is a crazy wow. result, even though Bradford aren't the best. Um, but yeah, Bradford they're going to have... Yeah, they Bradford are. They are a mess. The pitch is a mess. The ownership's a mess. They're just a yeah. mess. In the club. It's to be honest, I, I was expecting Bradford to be in the playoffs this year, especially with like Andy yeah. Cook up front. He was top goal scorer last season. So... I was expecting Bradford to be higher up. Um, but yeah, they're going to be full of momentum coming into the game on Friday, beating Bradford 3-0, even though they're not in the best of form. Beating anyone 3-0 in this league is pretty impressive. Uh, top players I've got down here, George Thompson, 12 goals, top goal scorer. Jack Muldoon, which is quite recognised in League 2 with nine goals. Kane Ramsey is a decent player as well. Um, we beat him 1-0 away from home last time. Um, we'll start with Jack you was there at Harrogate away on Tuesday night. A very, yeah, very long trip. Yes, very, we very stayed long. overnight. Then, so we stayed overnight. It's always an exciting game, isn't it? Harrogate. I think <laughs> last year was it three two. We won. Did yeah. Davis? Was it last year? We beat him three two. Yeah, and Davison got the winner. If I remember, is that right? Yes, and then I think at and yeah and yeah that was at Plough Lane, and then away from home we. Went 2 0 up and then conceded in the last second in a corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always an exciting game. There's always goals. I hope, I really do hope, you know, we can just start scoring some, like, a plethora of goals. That's really what makes sense. We can, yeah. Yeah. I think that is what I'd really like to see. But I think we'll keep it tight. I don't think Harrogate will score too many goals against us. If, I think maybe to a 2-1, but I'd like to see a 4-5-1. <laughs> but I think we'll we win 2-1. Oh, I really hope so. Hector, is that pretty much the same for you? I mean, Harrogate, they're all right. They're, they are a good team. They can cause teams problems, as as they've shown against Bradford, beating them 3-0. Um, what do you think will happen against Harrogate on Friday? It, it's a tough one, because our last two games, we haven't, we haven't looked great. Mm. They've... 
sort of fallen off from their amazing form that they, they went on. And I think it's it's going to be a close one, isn't it? It will be two teams really going for it. So I reckon there won't be much in it. I think it will be a 2-1, two 2-1 one, two one us, I reckon. Scorers? Kelly Brace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna say it again. We're gonna say it again. Kelly's gonna score his first goal. Uh, Jack, do you think Kelly will score four or five on on her Friday? Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I don't think he'll start. <laughs> With his was back, I don't think Kelly will start. <laughs> yeah, which I think is a bit harsh, but yeah, I think we. Might, I'd like to see a John Joe O'Toole goal. <laughs> I'd like to see. And, that uh, I think we may see another a Curtis goal, I think. I'd take that. I'd love to see that. And then we have Stockport on uh, Easter Monday, which will be a uh, very, very, very tough game. Well, to be honest, we've beaten teams which are up there in the table. We beat Mansfield 2-1. MK, they're up there in the table. I don't know. And then we beat... Uh, I don't think we've beaten a big team really away from home this season. But uh, you never know. It's Wimbledon. Wimbledon do crazy things. Um, Hector, we'll start with you. Stockport away. It's a tough one. They just beat MK last night. They got players like Paddy Madden scoring goals. Um, Isaac Alafe. Literally so many good players. What do you think will happen? You know what? It's 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 obviously not going to be easy because after watching that game on Sky where they beat um, the franchise five, yeah, good, and, the, and the franchise, you know they're. Well, it's undeniable they've been one of the of recent they've been on they've been one of the best teams in the league and to get thrash 5-0 like that it's 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 going to be tough because they're going to want to secure the automatic promotion you know after they had that um playoff heartbreak last season i mm. don't think they would be wanting willing to go through that path again i think they would be wanting to take the automatics because they can do that you know they, they they've they've been brilliant earlier in the season and I don't, I don't, because we don't take anything off big teams away. It's only when we do it. We only do it at Plough Lane. So I don't see us getting much out of it. I think I see a nil-nil in that. <laughs> to be very fair, I would easily take that. I would we've take, had, yeah. We, we've had a lot of nil-nils this season, haven't we? Um, and quite annoying ones, to be honest. Um, Jack, uh, final question before we end off the podcast about Stockport. What do you think will happen? And then give us your score predictions and a goal scorer if we do score a goal. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we've been really unambitious away from home this season. You know, we've yeah. we've had the good win of um, I think Walsall was a good win away. I think when out, I think that was an Ali scored and we all felt his goal when he was on that goal drought. We yeah. and uh, not obviously not County really good away win. But I just feel like every team we seem to be coming up against at the moment is having a big win just before they play us. You know, you've seen, like you said, got four, five nil after a little, probably not a terrible spell by them because they haven't lost, but they haven't picked up as many points as they thought they probably could have. Mm. I just feel like if we can keep it tight, we could frustrate them and maybe nick a one nil, being optimistic. Yeah. If we can keep it tight, but. I think if they score, the floodgates will just open and maybe we'll lose 3 0. But I mean, I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of at Stockport, oh. if that makes sense. They're, really, they're a really good side. They were a good side last season and you probably tip them to go <clears throat> up this season. So, 100%. They're, they're a good club. You know? I, so, even, yeah. I, even think that, I even think if they get promoted, they'll do well in League One as well. Easily, I think. I think they've got the finance to do it, haven't they? So I think that's the difference between teams going up from League Two to League One. Mm. If you haven't got the finance to invest in your squad, then you will be just going straight back down. So it's like the, para one. the parachute payment. Yeah. League One is pretty much like the mini championship this season. You have clubs like Derby County, Portsmouth. Yeah, it, it'll be so hard to compete. And then... You have the massive difference in the league with the Cheltenhams, the Cambridges, the Fleetwoods, the Carlisles. And, and and you look at Carlisle, I thought they were a pretty decent team last season. Got promoted via the playoffs, beating Stockport, and now they're rock bottom and about 10, 11, 12 points away. 
from getting out of the relegation zone. So they're going straight back down, awful season. And that's probably why I'd rather stay in League Two, to be honest. Quick one. Would you say, would you say obviously, we let Charlie Lakin go back in January? Mm -hmm. Would you say we'd be better off now if we had kept hold of him and played him some more minutes in that midfield? It's an interesting one. Um, I was actually With quite a fan football. of Charlie Lakin. I was quite a fan of him. I know a lot of fans didn't really like him, but in my opinion, when you look at the Portsmouth away game when we beat them 5-2, I thought yeah. he was outstanding. And that assist, which I think it was for Davison's goal, um, which was brilliant. Yeah, he just didn't get the opportunities and fair play to him. He's gone to Sutton, even though they're bottom of the league. He's done really well. And they're what... A, two, three points. I think it may be even one point away from getting out of the relegation zone. So they're really close. Um, he has that creativity in midfield. I mean, he knows how to ping a pass to, and, and we have wing backs now. So if you have Curry and Newville bombing on, um, even Kelly, if you want to just loft over the top a little bit. Yeah, I feel like he would have been quite good in the squad. Is that the same for you, Jack? Would you have you, do you, did you rate him? Oh, well, one I don't think we saw enough of him to make a conclusive yeah. rating of him. But every time he played, I don't Good. think he done much wrong, personally. You know, and obviously now he's gone to Sutton, he's like their William Wallace. If they're going to stay up, you know, freedom. He's sort yeah. of their shining torch, their light. I think if anything happens to him, they're resigned to relegation. But yeah, I, I do think we could have done with that extra creative player. And I think a player that could have really shone in this period, maybe Morgan Williams, if he was fit. Yeah, I do but agree. Especially, I especially he, when you look at Chelsea away, he was brilliant. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I heard a little something on the weekend that he's on Chelsea's radar, but I don't know how true that is. <laughs> we'll see. I with, mean, with, Robin, took, um, with Mark Leo Robinson Cup. being there. Sorry, with Mark Robinson again. being there. With Mark Robinson being there as well. And coming through the academies together, I mean, it is all the links are there, but you know, <laughs> has he played enough to justify it? That is true. And and also when he played at Woking, like I went to go watch him a couple of times as I live quite local, and I, he was really good. He was a uh, pretty much their star boy. He was working really well all the time. Has that just he just he just we just he just works hard for ninety minutes to be honest. Um, Hector, as we were talking about Charlie Lake, and I wanted to get your opinion before we end the podcast. What, what what was your thoughts on Charlie Lake? And is it pretty much the same with us or are you going to completely yeah, change? I, I, I agree. I thought every time he played, he didn't, he didn't do much wrong. And I thought he deserved a couple more minutes in, in the league. Mm -hmm. I thought every time he played in a cup game, it was, it was it was pretty good. And I think I think it was probably worth keeping him. I, I don't think we should have let him go. I think we should have gave him a, bit more, a couple more minutes. I think it was a mistake not giving him as many minutes. And, you know, if, if maybe we gave him a, some more game time, he might not have left. But, yeah, I completely agree. I think he was he was a very good player. Sign him if Sutton go down. There you go. Because exactly. he'll still be in the area. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. Jack, Hector, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Don's Vlogs, please go do it because they're brilliant at what you guys do, especially with Ronnie and all of... And he's starting to talk more, as, as you said earlier on, which is really good to see. Doing all the halftime chat with all the boys is brilliant. Um, yeah, Hector, Jack, thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, come on, you dons.